Hi friends, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Today we are going to focus on binding. That is right, start to finish on binding. So I'm gonna show you how to cut your strips, how to sew your strips, how to press your strips and in those pressing of the strips. We are gonna be using a notion called the Quilted Hearts Binding Ease. That's right. This can be found with my affiliate link down in the description below at uh, Fat Quarter Shop. So check that out after seeing it demoed in this video. And then after we press our binding, we're going to attach it to the quilt and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Others do it differently. I do it all by machine, so I attach it to the back and then I bring it to the front to sew it down. There are some people that still do it by machine that attach it to the front and roll it to the back and then stitch it down. But I prefer, my preferred way, is to stitch it onto the back and then roll it to the front. So we're gonna go through my whole process, start to finish, and even if you want to hand sew it, this also works, you just have to do the the quilt top however you want to attach it to start with. So let's get to cutting some strips, putting them together, pressing them, and attaching them to the quilt. And I will show you every step. Okay, so I have what's left of my bolt of red, and we're going to be using red binding for this project. I also matched with a red thread that's already in the machine, but we're gonna take this and we're gonna cut two and a half inch strips. Now I'm gonna start by straightening this out because my last cut probably wasn't perfectly straight. So I'm gonna align my bolt up with a line on my mat and then down the side. And I'm just gonna make myself a fresh, brand new cut to start with. So I just need to move myself out of the way for a moment. I always make my first cut left-handed you guys can turn the whole thing around and make your nice straight cut properly with your right hand, but I tend to, with bolt of fabric, use my left hand to start. So now I have a nice straight line on my fabric. I'm gonna go ahead now and turn my ruler around since this ruler right here is an eight and a half inch ruler. It's the Quilter Select ruler. I love this thing, especially for cutting yardage. This has a half inch mark on one side and it does not on the other. So we're gonna use the side that has the half inch mark because I'm going for two and a half inches. So I'm gonna line the marking on here that says two and a half because it's literally marked out for you when you read from this side back. I'm gonna put the two and a half inch line on the edge of my fabric and then I'm going to make sure that it's fully lined up now, depending on your ruler, you'll have to hold or walk your fingers up the ruler. This ruler stays in place on fabric, so I literally just make a cut and slide it over. So I'm gonna repeat that process. I need, I, I think I need seven strips, honestly, but I'm gonna cut eight just to be safe because I'm filming this for you. So there's cut two. I'm also making sure when I do this that the line up here is straight with the fold of the fabric. I tend to do that too, to make sure that I have a nice accurate square cut and have no elbowed, elbowed folds, which happens sometimes when you're cutting strips from yardage. So I'm at the fourth strip now, and I'm just making sure everything's nice and straight. So there's four, I'm gonna cut number five. Again, they're two and a half inches. And six, and I'm gonna have to unroll for the last two of a little bit off my bolt. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. And I have six strips right here. Just gonna unroll a little bit and cut. Now you can see that I've it's off the line now. You can line it back up if you need to, and you can see right here that it started to get wonky, even lining it up. So if I go and line this ruler back up. Oh no, it is actually kind of straight. I'm gonna line it back up right here. And there you go, you can see it's sticking out just a little bit. So if that happens, 
the more strips you cut, the more chances that you have of that happening. I'm just going to go ahead and re-straighten that back out, just like this. And I do all that with my left hand. And then line my ruler back up and continue cutting. So I need two more strips. One and two. Oh, and to get the amount of strips you need, you need to determine the how many inches all the way around your quilt that you have in total to know how many inches. And then you divide it by, I don't even know the number because I don't do math. You want to know how I honestly do my strips, guys? Here is my rectangular quilt. I know that two strips will fill this whole side because it's 44 and 44 makes 88. And then I say, oh, two more strips on this side. And then I say, depending on its width, you know, I'll say, oh, I need one and a half strips or two strips. There is a website that you can do the math on. It's a Robert Kaufman app. And you can get the math right there and it'll tell you how many strips. It's a little app you can have for your phone. I just do it by remembrance of how many strips I cut for certain size quilts. So, and this quilt is like 80 by 80. So I cut eight strips. It's not really 80 by 80. It's a little bit shy of that. It's like 78. But either way, I cut myself eight strips because I want to be safe and have enough. So let's take this over now to the sewing machine and start attaching our strips. Here we are at the machine and here are my strips. So we're gonna take these and we're gonna sew these together. So let me show you how to do that. Some people do it differently than I do. Just thought I would let you know. Like I said, everybody does something a little bit different. And I'm adjusting the camera for you guys because I didn't realize it was so close to my legs and I don't want to hit it a bazillion times. Anyway, so I have my stitch length set to a two. When I attach my strips, we attach them on the diagonal. So I'm gonna take strip number one and lay the rest down here on my lap and take strip number two because I need two. What I'm gonna do is I have everything still on the fold. I'm gonna slide this bottom piece out to where the top, so this is my right side up, is facing me. And then I'm gonna take this other strip and just pull that right side upside and lay that like an L shape and cross this piece just like that. And then I let it fall onto my lap. And I do mine this way. Some people do it from the top. I find it actually easier this direction. So I'm going to turn this strip like this. I'm holding it in place. And I'm going to come in with my needle right here at this junction in that peak or the, you know, not peak, but uh, well, if it's coming this way, it's peak, but you know what I'm saying. I'm going to start in that little junction and then I'm going to line this other side up with the line on my seam tape. All these gadgets and all these extra notions, they kind of, they don't just kind of, they really do help in the end when you're doing stuff like this. So here it's time for the next piece. This is now wrong side up. I need to take and flip it right side up. So I kind of, as you can see, I'm putting the right side back up again. So if I can see where the fold of the uh, bolt, where it was folded on the bolt sticking up at me, then I know that's right side up. With solids, it really doesn't matter, but we definitely want all of our strips to go together beautifully <laughs> and the same direction. So here's the next strip. I'm again gonna take this top piece and right sides together on top of this. And I'm also going to hold this whole thing, turn it, adjust, start with my needle in that corner, in the valley. That's the word for it. it was valley was the word I was looking for earlier. And then sew all the way to the other valley. And I'm going to repeat that step. So I'm, it's wrong side up right now. I pull it over my hand to where you could see the peak from, you know, being folded on the bolt and I'm right side up. So I'm going to take my next strip from in front of me and put it right side down on top of it. Again, like an L shape. And I'm going to continue this until all the strips are together. So here's some music and fast forward for a few minutes.
Okay, so I have snipped all those pieces off of the machine. Everything is stacked up right here so that I can get to all of these ends. So I'm just gonna throw that out of the way and pick up the, the closest one to me, which is this. And I am going to lay it right here in front of me and in front of you. And we're going to take a ruler and I always use the ruler because it's easier, but I'm gonna line my ruler up a quarter inch away. Right here, can you see my stitch line? No, because it's in red. Yeah, you can kind of see it. I'm gonna line it up a quarter inch away from that line, that stitch line. Oh, it's really hard to see. And I'm gonna go snip. I'm gonna move that out of the way. And then I'm gonna get rid of the dog ears. I always just do it like that because it's easier. And I just slide those out of the way. Then we're gonna go on to the next piece that I can visibly see. We're gonna lay this here. And again, I'm gonna repeat the process and cut a quarter inch away from my seam line. If you can't see because your thread is exactly the same color as your binding, you could always use the valley right here at that peak. And you can line your quarter inch line up there and there if you can't see your thread which is my little issue so again i'm just snipping all these away grabbing the next one just like this i always flatten it out first if you guys haven't noticed in some of my videos i always just like okay stay flat <laughs> because sometimes it'll bunch up and you can actually ruin your cut if you have bunched up fabric so we're going to grab the next one and this is a very crucial step because this is the making sure you have no bulk when you put your binding, start folding it in half, you don't want the bulk. So you definitely want to make sure that it's cut away. So again, flatten it out. We're gonna lay this on here, cut it away, go snip and snip. I just line up my blade along that side you haven't noticed to get the dog ears off. Some people cut up and then over and then down. I don't do that because it's too many times of moving the ruler. But we just go snip and you could do it like this if you want. Just keep that ruler down and slide it around to get your dog ears. But all right, I have got every single piece cut off now. So there's my ends. I actually save these because I use them for other stuff. So those are getting thrown out of the way for now. And we're going to move on to the ironing. So don't mind my ironing board. It is starting to get really stained. Anyways, this is the Quilted Hearts Binding Ease. Okay. This thing, when I saw it demoed, they used a tiny little iron. One of those little compact, tiny travel irons, I guess is the word for it. I don't have one of those. But I can tell you right now, this big, huge, reliable, definitely not an option. This thing weighs like five pounds. No, it doesn't really weigh five pounds, but it feels like it weighs five pounds. And it puts too much pressure on this silicone pad, so we won't be able to pull our binding through. Then we have this option right here. This is just a uh, GE iron with a retractable cord. It is also a little bit bulky and heavy, but it does have a ceramic plate, so it does heat up a little bit faster but it's still a little heavy for this um, silicone tray that you're, we're gonna be working with. Then we have a Black & Decker. This one is actually lighter than the General Electric or GE. This one is a lot lighter, but it's not the lightest that I can get. So again, I can use this one, definitely can use this one, but this one is kind of ruined, so I'm not going to. This, this iron likes to pick fabric up and tear it. <laughs> Anyways, that's just an example, okay? Then we have this cheapy little Proctor Select. This thing gets hot quick. It has the ceramic plate. You just lay it on here. This thing literally, as you can see, picks up with my finger. So it's just as heavy as those little tiny irons. I would use my Panasonic cordless. That is a perfect choice, but it doesn't stay. You actually have to put it back on the base to heat it back up again. A corded iron is way better for this, for this reason that we're working with right now. So 
We're going to go with the Proctor Select. We're going to plug that in and we're going to start showing you how to use this binding ease. Okay, so here is all my binding up here. I'm going to tell you the first thing we need to do, and I put the camera in this angle so that you can watch how this works, but the first thing we need to do is if you press your seams open, press them open. If you press to one side, go through and press all of your seams to one side or the other. All right, so the first step after you push, press all those seams, and I did that off camera because I'm going to be in an awkward angle trying to show you guys all this. We're going to, I'm just going to move that out of the way, we're going to start by making our normal fold that we fold binding. So you take your binding and you fold it edge to edge like this. You line those two edges up and I'm going to go ahead and press this real quick so that I have a start on my binding. So there's pressed. Now we're going to bring this close to us so that you can see Again, this is the Quilted Hearts Binding Ease. You can find it with my affiliate link down at Fat Quarter Shop in the link below in the description of this video or on my About Me page. All right, so we're gonna have this with the fold facing down. You want that fold facing you because you want to be able to fold this as we go. And what I'm going to do now, and this is gonna be very hard to do to film, but I'm always gonna have my thumb in between the middle of this lining these up as I come along. Same as if you're folding your binding the normal way. Now we're gonna take the iron and we're just gonna place it on there. And I'm gonna try to do this quickly like, it's gonna slide a little. And I'm gonna pull from one side like this. Just watch your fingers because it can get hot when it comes from the opposite side. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tug at the same time on this side as I'm folding the other side. And again, my iron is kind of hot, so I'm trying to make it go quick. So you can see all I'm doing is folding the one side, pulling it through from the other, just lining those two ends up, same as I would normally do, just like this, and leaving my iron down. And it's just folding my binding for me heating it up nicely. I'm gonna lift that for a second so that you can see right here. See that color change right there? Because this is silicone, that color change from the iron sitting on this so long will actually go away. For me, this iron that I'm using, this little Proctor Select, turns it a little bit purple, but the actual purpleness goes away by the time I'm done, as well as any oxidation, not oxidation, but uh, steam, from the iron, if you have water in your iron, I run water through all my irons, so just that I let you know that. And I can't talk while I'm doing this. Anyway, I'm gonna put it back on here. And again, I'm just gonna pull with one side, fold with the other. And I'm trying to keep that line as flush on each other as possible, because I still want a good fold. And you can put up to a four, a four or four and a half inch strip through here. Again, I'm just pulling it through. You can see I'm not trying to tug super hard or anything, just pulling it through. I'm coming up to a seam. It goes through with ease. That's why it's called a binding ease, because it easily goes through. And I'm going to release it again. Do you see that color change? I want you guys to see it. It's not going to ruin it. It is a silicone mat. It's always going to go back to the way it was. But now since I'm kind of burning my fingers and in an awkward position, I'm just going to put you in a different position while I finish doing this. Ta-da, we have binding. And I'm gonna bring over the little mat so that you can see. It does take the shredding from the fabric as well. So it automatically like kind of pulls that out for you. It does stay hot for a few minutes, even on the bottom. 
So just watch out for that. The water will dry and the coloring, can you see that? See that slight coloring? I could see it through the camera. I don't know if you guys can, but it's about right here. You can see where the iron was. All that, as soon as it cools, will be gone. And your silicone mat will be perfectly, well, it's perfectly bendy still. But anyways, it's great. And you could just wipe it up when you're done if you want. So there that is. So now that we have the binding ready, we just need the quilt. So here is my quilt. Don't you just love it? <laughs> just kidding. Anyways, that's the back side. Um, that's the quilt. Now we're going to take this over because I need the back side anyway. Uh, and we're going to attach the, the, the binding to the back of this quilt. So let's go over to the machine. I'm not 100% sure how this is going to work with filming it because, again, I'm attached to cords, I'm attached to wires, and I need the stand. So let's see if I could even record this for you guys, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be here after this section right now. First things first, I need to wrestle the quilt. And I'm going to take my binding and I'm going to find an end and I'm going to throw this on the floor next to me in hopes that it stays. I do have a binding wheel, but it's, you can see it in the background over there, that right there. <laughs> I do have a binding wheel. I did not roll my binding on it. So let's see if I can get this nice and flat right here. I'm not trying to hide the quilt from you guys. I just need it to be in a good position. So I have it flat and what I'm gonna do, and I'm standing for this step, is I'm gonna find my end and I'm also gonna find the first seam. I don't want any seam to land in a corner. Even though if it did, it wouldn't bother me, but I'm gonna find that first seam and I'm gonna find a corner. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it up before a corner. So here's the seam right here. And then I'm just going to slide my binding up, 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 and away to about right here. And I'm gonna start with a pretty long tail, like 10 inches or so, that's always the best. I'm gonna go ahead and put my seam guide on here. Even though I have the line on my seam tape, for some strange reason, I still need a seam guide. I just, I just can't sew a straight line and I can't keep things straight and I can't keep it good. So <laughs> I have my seam guide here to help me. So again, my binding is on the floor next to me as best as it can lay. And then I have my long tail right here. I'm gonna leave a long tail and I'm gonna line it up the fold side. I'm just gonna make sure I remind you guys again that the folded over side, the side that it's straight lining on, is out facing out on the quilt. So this is this could be done if you're doing this from the top of the quilt and folding it to the back, or from like me, from the back of the quilt folding it to the front. So your fold faces inside the quilt and the the folded section that's folded onto itself faces out. And we're gonna go ahead and leave that nice long tail. We're gonna line this up at the edge. I'm going to put my foot down and we're going to change my stitch length to a 2.5-ish. I'm gonna take a couple stitches and then I'm going to line things up. So it's nice and down, holding in place, needles down. I'm just gonna use my first finger in the middle, the rest of my fingers on the bottom, first finger in the middle, thumb on the top, and I'm just going to sew on down using my fingers and see, I might hit the stand, and I'm sorry for that in advance. I'm using my fingers to guide this as I sew it on. So let's get down to that first corner, and then I can show you how that's done. And then we're going to go into some fast forward of music, because I don't think I can do this with the camera in front of my face the whole time. All right. Actually, it's to my side, but you know what I mean. So I'm just sewing on down, sewing on down. Now I'm going to, I got my corner coming up. Everything's still flat. My quilt is on here, or my binding is on here. I got some shredding picking up. That's why it's folding up under there. We're coming to this edge, right? I'm going to stop a quarter inch from the edge. And I said this in a Sew so Sunday video just recently. Some people sew up to a quarter inch and then they turn the whole quilt sideways and then sew off into the corner. I actually don't do that. I stop a quarter inch from the edge. So I sneak myself up to where my needle is a quarter inch away and then I back stitch. So when I pull it away like this, 
it's nice. Now I'm going to take it with my hand, it's still coming out towards me, and I'm going to lift it up right here, just like this. So that's what I'm doing, lifting it up, making sure that this line right here that I'm creating is nice and straight. Then I'm going to hold it. Then I'm going to flop it over itself and pinch down right here so that my fold is equal with the edge of the quilt this way and that this line right here is nice and straight. So let's show you that again. After I pick up my scissors that fell, oh, I wish you guys could see all the things that happen when I'm filming. <laughs> anyway, so again, it's coming out straight towards me, just like this, okay? This is my view. You guys are looking at it from my view. We're gonna take the whole thing and go up like this to the side, to the right, usually, and then smush it down. Then take the whole entire thing and cross it over to the left, pinching it down where the fold equally lands with the edge of the quilt and the edge of the binding lands with the edge of the quilt. Once that is done, I'm gonna hold it in place. You can see it's kind of funky right here. And I'm gonna turn this whole entire thing, and I know you can't see now because the quilt is in the way, and I'm going to stitch coming in from that end. Just gonna come right on in. So I'm not doing anything, I'm just coming right on in. And when I hit about a quarter inch in, I always backstitch. And that's one backstitch and that's it. Well, I mean, like four stitches worth, but. And then I continue on. So I'm gonna put you in fast forward with some music while I continue on this side. And then maybe I'll show you the next corner. Okay, so we made it around right here. I actually have a seam landing right here. Normally I don't have seams landing at the edge, but for some strange reason, a seam landed at the edge. So that means it's probably gonna happen in more than one corner. I should have went up two seams instead of one. But anyway, I'm gonna come down. I always, I still work with it anyway, whether the seam lands at the corner or not, but you can see that this seam is right here and this seam is on this side. I'm still gonna do the same exact thing. So I'm gonna come down right here. I'm gonna stop a quarter inch from the edge. And then I'm gonna back tack like that. I pull it away, I lift this side up and I flatten it out. So I have a nice straight piece here. This is straight with this and I have a nice 45 degree angle right here. And then I bring it over to my left. And I lay it down onto itself. It's nice and flat. I turn the whole entire thing and you're gonna see I'm getting covered up by quilt, but I'm just gonna come in from the end backstitch and then continue on. So that's how it's done. I'm gonna put the rest of this now and fast forward and I'm gonna move you guys into a new position so that I can actually do this properly. Now the binding is attached. I want to give you my view of this. So here is my two open ends and I did need eight strips. I knew it. <laughs> Here's my two open ends. 
I'm kind of sideways, but I want this to work. This side, obviously, the tail is really long, and the side is really long, too. I'm going to take a little bit off of this one to about right, I don't know, right here. I'm just going to, I'm going to cut it, not with scissors. All right, we're going to cut it. Now, I'm kind of working a little in a funky position here, probably blocking the camera even, but that's okay. All right, there's that. So it's kind of a little too far, and I can unpick this as far back as I need. Here is my two and a half inch Missouri Star ruler. I'm gonna flatten this out, and it is flat anyway. This is a very flat quilt. I'm gonna lay my two and a half inch ruler up to the edge where I just cut. So it's laying on that edge right there. And then I have a straight edge here, and I could see that this is straight right here. Then I'm gonna take my big tail right here, and I'm gonna cross that over the top. I'm gonna flatten it out. And don't mind all this, guys. This fabric, even though it's a you know good quality fabric, it's shredding. It's a Maywood Studio, but it, it shreds because I've told you guys plenty of times all fabric shreds. Anyway, solids mostly. They do the most. Anyway, we're gonna lay this out and we're gonna flatten that. I'm gonna take my scissors. Now I'm gonna slide them under this one, but not on the top. Can you see that? I'm not on this bottom one, I'm on the top one only. I'm gonna hold my ruler and I'm gonna take my scissors right up to it and then make a cut. Now you can see that it sticks over about an eighth of an inch. I always do this. I take my piece over to the side and I take my rotary cutter and I make it nice and straight. So you can see that little sliver was just barely over. And there it's nice and cut and ready to join. So we're going to move all this out of the way and I'm going to show you how these are going to get connected by zooming in so that you could see here's the end that we ended sewing with. We're going to open that up. And you know what just for video's sake I'm going to do something. Hold on so that I'm not trying to smooch anything too much. I undid my tail just a little bit longer so that you could see this. I'm going to open this strip up and face it down. I want my uh, mountain on the top. Can you see that? Just like this. Then I'm going to take this bottom one and I'm going to bring it up. So it means you need to move the quilt. Bring it up, keeping it still. It's in the same position. I want my mountain facing down like this. Okay. And I'm going to line up this top and this side right here. So it's all nice and lined up, just like this. And we're gonna put some pins in it. I literally never do this, but we're gonna do it anyway. So we're gonna put a pin here, and I'm gonna come over to this other side right here, and I'm gonna put a pin, quite a long one, on this side, just like that. Because I'm gonna be sewing from this point right here, so there's this strip. I'm gonna sew from this point down to this point under here. Okay, so I'm going to sew from here down to here. So let's go over to the machine and figure this one out. I'm telling you, sewing blocks on video is one thing during um, making a video, but this is a whole nother level trying to get a quilt bound. All right, so we're at the machine. I'm going to leave it bunched up right here, and I'm going to get my needle right here in this tip, and I'm going to line up this other tip down here with this line. So I'm just going to turn it a little bit and put my foot up, needle down, change my stitch length back to a two for now. I'm going to stitch right into it a couple stitches. I'm going to leave that needle down and then I'm going to adjust the whole strip. It's nice and flat. And I'm going to sew now towards this bottom corner that is on my seam tape. You could also draw your line if you need to, honestly, and sew on your line because then you wouldn't need the pins. I mean, you need the pins, but you can sew on that line and you wouldn't need a seam tape. So I'm just sewing towards that corner, just like this. And then I sew off, break thread, and while I'm still sitting here, in case of anything, I pull these pins out, and then I'm going to straighten the quilt before I do anything. And it looks like it is still nice and flat. So all I need to do is get rid of this excess back here. So I'm just going to fold the quilt out of the way, and I'm going to cut a quarter inch seam allowance along the back, just with scissors. I'm going to toss that out of the way. And then while it's bunched up, I'm going to finger press this now so that it stays nice and flat. And if you have a pressing tool, use that. 
All right, and then we're gonna straighten it back out again. And you can see it's nice and flat. I'm gonna get rid of some of this shredding. I'm gonna put my seam guide back the way I had it. It's always hard to get it exactly where I had it, but I manage. I'm gonna start where my, an inch before my stitching ran out. I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna change my stitch length back to a 2.5. I'm gonna hold this down here. I'm holding this out, which you kind of can't see, but, and I'm just going to stitch it on. And I'm gonna to go to about an inch beyond where I started. So I'm giving it just a slight tug down here. Just a slight tug, not too much. And you're gonna see a little pucker is gonna happen because I did cut just the tiniest bit too big. I'm gonna have a little pucker. I crossed over where I was already stitched, back and out. So you can see I have a tiny pucker, but the pucker is only on this side because when I flip it to the front, there's gonna be no pucker. So every now and then a little tiny pucker happens and that's because I didn't cut, you know, exactly. And it's really hard to get exact, but there's times that I don't have any puckers at all. So, but it usually happens at the final join. So now it's time to flip the quilt around. All right, so we are now flipped to the front. And I'm gonna start down at a corner so that I can show you the mitered corner. So we're gonna start first by taking our binding now and wrapping it to the front. And I'm gonna shove all the leftover strings up in there because why? I can. And I'm gonna lay it nice and flat and I'm gonna put my needle down an eighth of an inch in from the edge. I'm also gonna change my stitch length to a three and find a foot pedal because you guys are on the other side of me now. And I'm gonna take a couple stitches and back stitch. And then I'm going to adjust the quilt and I'm gonna start taking my finger and pushing the edge out like this. And I'm gonna hold my fingers up next to it and I'm gonna sew along that edge, an eighth of an inch from the edge. So again, I'm just gonna tuck my strings in, fold and an eighth of an inch from the edge, sew on down. So again, tuck it in, fold it over using my fingernail even. I use my fingers all the way up to the machine, but I don't sew them. Keep going. I'm coming up to a seam right now, which should be just fine. Hold it down. Adjust everything. We're gonna come to the first corner and I'm gonna show you how this works. We're coming down. Here's my first corner and I wanna miter it. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna flatten this first part out and I'm gonna pinch this end right here, okay? And let's zoom in so that you can see that a little bit better right there. So we're gonna hold that, pinch it, and fold it over. Tuck in any fraying and I'm gonna hold this side down while I'm at it. And see the two corners coming together? I'm just going to stitch right up to that corner. And I don't want this thread here. It's annoying me, so I snip them away if I see them. <laughs> We're gonna flip it back and put those two corners together. They should meet up exactly. So we're gonna sew right onto it, just like this. And I'm gonna take very slow stitches, one stitch into that corner, one stitch out of that corner, one stitch back into that corner. The reason why I do that is because it's gonna keep that miter down and it shouldn't ever rip. So now I'm gonna lift my presser foot, I'm gonna turn the whole project, my needle is still down, and I'm gonna do the pinchy finger thing and push this down, and then I'm gonna drop my foot and sew an eighth of an inch from the edge again. I'm gonna stop right here, adjust the whole quilt. I want the quilt onto my lap, which is the easiest way. And I think I need to adjust myself a little bit. And we're gonna fold this whole side down. Again, just pushing my fingers in it. And I usually do this pretty darn quickly like. Obviously when I'm filming, it's a little on the slower side, but it's usually pretty quick when I can sit in front of the machine properly. So 
again, I'm just folding it over with my fingers. Sew it, adjust the quilt, fold with my fingers, sew it, fold my, adjust the quilt. It's just a, three things. Sewing an eighth from the edge, using your fingers, holding and adjusting your quilt, and folding it over like this. Oops, and I went off because I am definitely in an awkward angle. So I just kind of back stitch a little bit. I backtrack it, I should say. I pick my needle up and move the quilt again. And I just adjust it. There we go. And when I can see that thread, I just pluck it out because I back stitched. And then I just kind of pluck that out real quick. Not perfect, but when is anything perfect? So again, folding it over using my fingers. Staying an eighth of an inch from that edge, fold it over, sew it. We're going to do this second corner and I'm going to show you one more time and then I'm going to put you in fast forward with some music, There's some dust there, got to move that out of the way. Using my fingers. Adjust the quilt often, just like this. Coming up to another corner. I'm gonna pick all these threads off now while I'm here, just from the shredding, less to tuck into that corner. All right, so again, just pushing it down. We're gonna come up to that corner soon. We're here, we're in the picture, we're gonna this is the one that has my seam now. So if you end with a seam at your corner, do the same exact thing you always would do. So push it down, fold it over, fold it over. So I do have a seam there. So I'm going to hold it down just a little bit tighter than I normally would. I'm going to come up to it super slow. Just going to hold it, hold it, hold it. Come one stitch into the corner, one stitch out, one stitch back in. Turn the whole thing and continue on down. And when I show you the finished um, quilt, I will show you how that corner ended up with a seam in it. Because it happens. You can't control it every time unless you pre-lay your binding on your quilt and pin it in place with some binding clips. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this now in fast forward with some music. Okay, so here is the finished quilt. I'm gonna show you all four corners so that you can see. 
So here is the miter again. I pulled it out straight and then made that little pinch at the end and then folded it onto itself so you can see they meet right up. When I start going this way, is this the one that the seam landed in? Yep, this is the one that has a seam in the corner so you can see it's not quite 100% in the corner, but it reads corner when you look at it like this. But you can see from the back side that there is a seam that landed in that corner. But that's okay. You know why? Because it still worked. Let's go to another corner. I always check while I'm finishing. I like put my fingers along this lip to make sure that nothing lifts up like I didn't come off the edge because I kind of speed through this, you know, so I make sure that the whole entire edge is stitched down. Here is another corner. So even in that awkward angle, I was able to get my corners. Again, I just use my fingernails to make sure that there is no lip along this edge that lifts up because that would mean I stitched off and missed the binding altogether, which has happened plenty of times, which you saw a little bit ago. So here's that fourth corner. You can see it lines right up. And then the back side looks like this. I do got to go through, I do this with every quilt. I go through and remove the basting stitch. If you can see it, um, I go through and remove it. It comes out really easily because it's such a big stitch, but I'll do that with a seam ripper. So there's that last corner. And let me check this last edge. And it's good. My fingernail is running along it. Nothing has lifted up. The stitching is on the binding, not off the binding. And we're back at my original first corner. So it worked out perfect. I don't have any problems. The back side looks great, as you can see. And the front side looks even better because it gives it that last and final border. Honestly, it's a last and final border is what it looks like to me. And then the back side is thin. So you can hand stitch it down. You can machine stitch it down. But this is how I do it by machine. Let's review the whole entire quilt real quick and be done with this video. Hi guys. So you can see binding is on. I'm going to turn the camera around because I'm in my nightgown and it's nighttime and I just want to relax. So I'm just going to show you the finished quilt with the binding and the tag, which you guys didn't see while I was attaching the binding. Oops. <laughs> anyway, I... Got it all done, so let's just look at the whole entire quilt, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. So we're in my living room, slash dining room, so don't mind the mess. But here is the hashtag love quilt, all finished. And I'll come in close to it in a second. It's kind of hard to get the whole thing in camera because I didn't pull the whole stand out. So you can see the binding gives it that final border look. It looks super awesome. So you can see, and there is the bottom, oops, 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 and there is the bottom. So you can see it looks great with that binding. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's see what the back looks like. All right, so this is what the back looks like. You can see that binding shows all the way around the edge quite nicely and then the tag is down there at the bottom it says hashtag love February of 2022 and then on the other side of it it says Tiffany Groff quilting designs so there it is right there all complete if you want to see this being quilted check out my long arm quilting playlist and you can see this being quilted in that playlist Thank you for watching. Bye.